After my unsuccessful Kickstarter a few months ago, I decided to take a step back, temporarily postpone my main project, and instead work on some smaller projects just to get some things out there and to vary the content for this channel. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor, where I post devlogs with an emphasis on game design and technique. So a couple of weeks ago, I started development on a mini platformer adventure game where you'll explore a small open world, complete a variety of unique and epic mini quests, and embrace his all-encompassing light. My goal being to develop a fun and simple game that is small in scope and quick to create. Even though this project is small in scope, the challenge of developing it will not be a simple task. There are many obstacles to overcome, and even more quickly this time around if I want to develop the game in such a short timeline. I will need to continuously organize the project, cut down the scope, and smack down any big ideas that could bloat the game and considerably lengthen the development time. Otherwise, the project can easily become overwhelming and not something that I alone can complete within a reasonable amount of time. Development officially started on July 16th, 2021, and I needed to figure out what my game was about and what aspects of it that I needed to develop before worrying about any of the non-essential mechanics. I needed to focus on creating a great prototype and refining the gameplay early on before I started to work on anything else. Otherwise, I could lose sight of my game before I even got out of the gate. I started with the combat since it's going to be the main action that the player engages in while they're exploring. Combat will be simple yet engaging, and I want the enemies to be memorable. You may recognize this as being similar to my approach in Zona Curse Streamer, and that's because personally, I prefer simple combat that relies on strategic gameplay and awareness of your position, rather than fast reflexes and button combos. But this is a platformer, and one of the main traits of platformers is they tend to feature a little more action. These types of games are fun to develop though, because I like to put a lot of attention into how the gameplay feels. How fun is it to just run around jumping and attacking? I could spend months just polishing the game feel. <sighs> I'm doing it again. Designing the main player for this game was a challenge, because it can be so intimidating to create an iconic character so early on in development, yet until you do so, you can't really start showing it off to the world and having them tell you what game you're cloned. So there were many failed attempts to design the main character, which resulted in my Discord community heckling me by comparing my adorable bunnies to the creepy Easter bunny from Animal Crossing. Unlike Animal Crossing, however, this is not a survival horror game, so I decided to keep trying to create a character just as cute as my bunnies, but figured it might be better to stick to a human character for now. Eventually, I managed to design a character that is iconic and memorable. Even if at first his eyes are a deep abyssal void that quickly consumes your soul if you so much as make a passing eye contact, I gave him messy hair because I think it would be amusing to play as a character that just wakes up one day and accidentally becomes a hero. He's a bit of an anti-hero, not because he's grizzled and seen some stuff in his time, but because he so happens to wake up and stumble his way into situations which result in him being the hero that gets paraded throughout the town. He is but one of the characters though. There will be several different ones that you can play as which will drastically affect the course of your playthrough. You'll have to unlock these, but there will be different traits like varied movement speed and jump height and abilities or a lack of traits such as the ability to swim which may affect which areas you can and can't explore. Level design has been challenging because I want to sort of blend in the exploration of games like Hollow Knight Ori, but at the same time I don't want it to feel like it takes place entirely underground. I almost want it to sort of have a Super Mario World feel to it in both gameplay and exploration. So I want to incorporate the surface level into the game design as well, which I'll probably achieve through areas like the Mage Tower, a dark castle, maybe a forested area, and so on. Luckily, my experience developing Zona Curse Streamer has helped me a whole lot already, and sped up development considerably for this project. I'm already repurposing a lot of the code, such as the context-based movement system for that one video, by using it to help flying enemies navigate throughout the levels underground. This involved a fun little trick that I'll cover in another video, which really helped me smooth out the flight. There isn't much use for a combat system if there aren't any enemies to fight. I needed to design a few enemies so that I could understand what a typical encounter feels like in the game. I also need them to be interesting so that they're fun to encounter and not just a hassle between you and your goal. Thankfully, this is one of my more noteworthy skills as a game developer. I really think that just having enemies that are memorable goes a long way towards creating a good quality game. The first enemy added to the game is a goblin, which is a species that you encounter in various forms. They're a goofy bunch of critters that are a mild nuisance to the town by looting them for supplies such as kitchen utensils, which they use to play out their fantasy adventures. Mostly harmless, but how you handle them will be up to you. There will be even a goblin type that has turned the derpy frogs into mounts, which they ride into battle. They attack from range while keeping out of danger. During my break, after the Kickstarter for Zona Curse Streamer, I prototyped a few games. One night, I had a dream about a game where a player would play as a frog. They would navigate throughout the world by inflating themselves and floating around aimlessly until they got where they wanted to be. Clearly, this turned out to be a terrible movement mechanic for the player. But, I talked with my Discord about this and we ended up turning it into an enemy and drew it on stream. They fell in love with the idea. It even became an emote for our Discord. But, then I stopped working on that prototype and suddenly they turned on me. 
They threatened to riot if I did not include the balloon frog in the game, and even threatened me with various frogs that would fight with them in the riot. Normally, I would not give in to such demands, but I felt cornered, and they had a good point, because the frogs were hilarious, so I've also added them to this game instead. They will sort of chill out until you approach them, at which point they will jump up, inflate themselves, and just sort of float around. They're not really a threat, but they are hilarious and can actually get in the way during a proper fight if there are enough of them. If they get punctured on a spike, however, then they will pop and quickly fly off the screen like a balloon. And then there's this undeniably cute and adorable trapdoor spooter, which will hide underground in its little hole until you get close, at which point he'll pop out of the ground and try to give you little kisses. If you're afraid of eight-legged critters, then not to worry, this guy probably just cured that. Look at how happy he is to see you. Someone did ask, however, if I was going to include an arachnophobia mode which removes the spooters, but probably not. Personally, I love them, and they will probably have some significant role in the game. I'm even considering an entire, probably optional area that is a spooter nest, and maybe even a spooter boss. However, I did joke that if I were to do that, I would just replace them with a giant hammer-wielding clowns, so it'd be up to you which one you're more afraid of. There will be several bosses as well, unique ones much like my approach to enemy design. I haven't designed any at the moment, so that's something we'll get to in a later video, but I do have some ideas. During the whole frog revolution, a frog-dragon hybrid was proposed called a froggin and also threatened to be used in the riots. I mean, it's on and on with this whole frog thing. So that could be one of the bosses that you encounter. Second to combat, the main focus of the game is going to be exploration. This is a small open world where you can solve it like a puzzle. It will have various different areas with unique enemies and interesting environments, but to get to these areas, you will need to find certain items or abilities that grant you access to them. This will have much of the overall design style that I was using for Zona Curse Streamer, because it's how I like to approach game design. Things like unique and interesting enemies, lovable and quirky characters, player choices and role playing, but it will be a lot more compact than simple, which will make for some interesting fast paced RPG gameplay. I'm using a 24 by 24 pixel tile set. I actually started out with the intention of using a 16 by 16 tile set this time around, because I wanted to keep the art simple and quick to create, but after creating the grass tile set, I immediately became nostalgic for my 24 by 24. So I recreated the grass in that and decided that I would go forward with this style again. The art will take a bit longer to create, but it will have that playful cartoonish style that is more associated with me and who I am. I often get asked about what engine I use to create games, and I will be using the Godot engine for this project, which is a lightweight engine that is known for being easy to learn for beginners, yet powerful enough to handle everything that I've ever thrown at it. So if you're new to game development, then I highly recommend it. I've actually been learning how to create plugins for it recently, which I've been using to create my own level editor of sorts, allowing me to automate a lot of my workflow and expand upon its features like a brush size that I mentioned in my previous project. I will talk about this a bit more in the future devlogs because it is such a powerful feature that I can't believe more people aren't talking about. If you want to support this project during development and get snippets of source code such as my context-based movement system, then consider becoming a patron where I post regular devlog journals and source code that you can use for your own projects. There's actually a free Patreon post in the description that talks a little bit more about this project and what I have planned. As I continue making progress, there will be a playlist in the corner where you can binge watch all of my videos for this game. Be sure to ding-ling the bell to get notified for future videos, and I'll talk to you next time.